and welcome to Australia in Space TV. My name's Chris Cubbage, I'm the Executive Editor. Today we're going to be joined by Dr Chris Flaherty and looking at Australia's launch capabilities and our sovereign requirements, I suppose, and also the spaceport options that Australia does actually have. And so without further ado, Dr Chris Flaherty, thanks for joining us once again. Good morning, Chris, and good morning to everybody. Great. Now, we're not aware of uh, you, Chris. You've been on with us a number of times giving us uh, industry updates on the space sector. What I'd like to do is bring up a map of Australia. You've just recently uh, written for this in terms of our space and defence uh, website as well. But these are Australia's sort of launch options. Uh, and we also have some uh, space activity uh, in these areas as well. Talk us through this. We will have a link uh, to our space and defence article that Chris wrote uh, on the website as well, and also in our latest edition of the Australia in Space magazine. But Chris, Ed, walk us through uh, your analysis of where we're currently at in Australia on our launch uh, capabilities. Well, probably the biggest uh, news item right now is that the Australian government announced um, only this uh, earlier this month was probably investing about $65 million into Australian spaceport development. And the question we need to ask ourselves, well, where do we actually, where would we be launching rockets from in space? Well, currently there's about three options um, that are current in, in development. Um, the most important of these, of course, is Equatorial Launch Australia, which is actually from Arnhem Land, which is the Arnhem Land Space Centre. We also have Gilmore Space Technologies in Queensland, which is actually Gilmore's important in this picture because they actually have built, they actually are a, a rocket builder. And we have a rocket called the Enus, which we'll look, talk about a little later, which is 25 metres high and is capable of launching into low Earth orbit as well as higher orbits. We also have Whaler's Way, um, which is Southern Launch, and we'll talk a little bit about them later on in the day, or today. Um, we have some of the traditional or very well-known sites such as Woomera, which goes back to the 60s or 70s, which had substantial rocket launch capabilities, and actually launched one of the original UK rockets called the Black Arrow. Um, we also have some of the older historical sites, such as Weeple was proposed for uh, some years ago as a, um, a Cape Warp International Spaceport. We have a newcomer on the scene, which is WA Spaceports in Albany. Um, we, there is some indication that Black Arrow, the UK company, which is, which is looking at sea-based launch options, would find a port like Port Hedland favourable. So that's where we are right now. Maybe just talk us on Albany. Where, where's that one uh, in Western Australia there? What was that one? I haven't heard of that one before. Uh, yeah, there's actually a web page. And what we'll do be doing in, at the end of this talk when we put up all the notes, we'll also provide uh, viewers with various web page links to the major companies. Um, the Albany proposal, I personally don't know a lot about it. I, was just, I came across it in my research. And in the, in the notes, we actually talked, we've extracted out of the notes a number of issues which go into explaining what a spaceport is and why, what their requirements are. And of course, what's interesting about all these space ports is they all have a requirement to link into something else, which is not an airport, a port or, a, or land transport. So I think that's one of the most important things to understand is that what, what goes, what, how we think about spaceports is there's a number of locational issues. One is that the location uh, leads over clear water. Now, why is that important? Well, the most obvious reasons is actually safety. Um, potentially, when you launch a rocket, you preferably want to launch it in a direction over clear space or clear water where there is not a lot of human activity or human occupation or human settlement. For the obvious reasons, rockets do potentially fail when they launch. Um, the other thing about a space about a spaceport, it has to actually be in a location which it gives a country a good access or a launcher good access into optimal op, uh, launch routes. Those are equatorial or polar as we call them. Now, Australia is a very interesting situation because Australia is a large continental landmass in the Southern Hemisphere. And of course, you all, everyone knows about the most famous space port of all, which is Cape Canaveral in the United States, which is equatorial. Uh, the other, other most famous ones, of course, is Baikonur in Kazakhstan, which is Russia's, the Soviet Union's premier uh, launch facility. And all countries really strive for what is called sovereign launch. Sovereign launch is the ability of a nation to launch a rocket under its own license. The most preferable situation in sovereign launch is a country actually has control of the location where it's launched from. However, in many cases, this is not so. For example, the European Union is dependent on many other places to launch from. The United Kingdom's interesting because they actually have several northern launch options themselves. And I think we've looked at 
United Kingdom, United Kingdom launching position, launching options, several other interviews, notably with Paul from Black Arrow, as well as we actually looked at the UK situation. I think, Chris, uh, later on next month, we'll be looking at the Australian and UK Space Bridge. We are on the 11th of May here in Sydney. We've got an event. So, yeah, well, we'll have a link in there for you. Yeah. Um, but maybe just talk us through uh, maybe Gilmore as well. Yeah, Gilmore is really is significant in terms of Australia. Um, the, the two Gilmore Space actually is a, is a builder of rockets. So this is Australia's entry into the rockets, but into the into the serious space market. Uh, this is their latest development, which is the. Uh, I'm sorry, Chris, you and I, I think you're better pronouncing this one than I am. The Eris. 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 Apologies to Gilmore. <laughs> um, this rocket is about 25 meters high. It's about 2.2 meters to about 2.2 meters wide. It's capable of launching a uh, small payload. When we say small payload, this is Gil This is actually from Gilmore Space yeah, itself. This is their rendering, rendering of what they think a rocket will look like uh, launched from Abbott Point in Queensland, which is where they've been given permission to launch from. Um, the, the rocket itself is capable of carrying a, um, a payload between 215 and 305 kilograms into various orbital positions. Um, and we expect that Gilmore should be able to launch its first rocket sometime this year. So I think that's something that we'll probably be we'll be watching very closely. And um, we have one more picture, I think we have, which is Gilmore. This is actually a really interesting one. This is actually Gilmore in its developmental stage. They actually designed and built their own mobile launch, launch rocket launcher as they were designing their rockets. But I wanted to include this one as well to explain to people that rocket launching occurs not only from fixed geographical positions, it can also occur from sea base, that is a ship designed specifically to launch a rocket, which is an example being Black Arrow Space Technologies, but also rocket launching can occur from mobile launches. So we haven't, so one of the things that we're looking for in terms of spaceport requirements is a spaceport has to be able to launch a rocket over a safe area. That's normally water. It has to be in, in, in a correct geographical position to, to get to get optimal access to an orbital launch, to an orbital position. Uh, that has to do quite often with a planetary spin. Um, a spaceport also has to connect up quite often with a number of the other um, transportation um, systems we have, such as major airports. People and resources need to come into and act to be able to ship to, to be able to put into to shift into a spaceport, and later on in this talk we'll actually look at what a spaceport actually is. Um, road and transport is very important elements as well. So interestingly enough, we look at all the locations so far identified. All of them connect to a major airport. They all connect to transport nodes. They all have safe launch options in terms of going of launching overseas. And in, and in case of Port Hedland, the reason why the the northern coastline is preferable because that's the widest portion of the continental shelf. Because one of the things that you're looking for is fairly still, is fairly sort of, sort of quiet waters, if you like. And this is all explained in the notes that we'll put up for people to read later on to, later on today nice. when they view this this presentation. All right, mate. And uh, let's go to the Southern Launch Spaceport in Whalers, Whalers Way. Yeah, this is actually really interesting. This is a rendering courtesy of Southern Launch of what a classic of what their proposed design launch facility will look like. I suppose the most the most dominating feature of a um, of a spaceport is you'll notice that right about um, there's a large water there's a large water um, reservoir. You'll notice following on from that there appears to be a sort of like a hole with a trench. That's the launch point. Yeah. Most important aspect of a of of rocket launching is actually what's called a fire redirection trench. You'll notice that on either side there's there's various other buildings and facilities such as, for example, fuel farming and fuel storage, which was crucial to launch. Why is water so important? Well, in actual fact, water is important for one, especially part of a system we call suppression of uh, sound suppression. When a rocket launches, it can generate a huge amount of sound. That sound leads to vibrations, which are actually potentially damaging to the rocket, but also potentially damaging to people around them. So when we famously look at some of the really big launches, which occur at Cape Canaveral, huge amounts of water are expended on, onto the rocket base as it launches to suppress the sound of the rocket launching itself from actually damaging itself during the launch. 
Um, this is a critical issue with a lot of the lot of them. So that's why water is such an important component. You also notice there's a long road leading to a very large shed at the end. That's the stacking shed where we stack the rocket, because rockets are actually have a number of different components. In the case of the Ennis, I believe it's a three-stage rocket. That is, there's three components to the rocket. There's an, there's the end of the rocket, which is what we call the fairing, which is a covering which covers the payload, which is a satellite in, in many cases. This connects to, has its own little motor because the rocket actually, as a rocket goes, the, the predominant part of the rocket is the first stage, which gives you the power to lift off the, the surface of the planet. At a certain point when that's expended, that, that's jettisoned. The second stage takes over to take you into a, into a better orbital, into, into deeper into your orbital position. That then is expended. Um, and then the final stage, the fairings are released the payload is released and it quite often is shunted into its actual preferred orbital position. So there's a number of complex relationships going on here. So this is actually what a rocket launch. Now, what does this connect to? Well, ideally this connects to a road system because you need to be able to transport rocket components and payloads towards the, it also needs to largely connect to airfields. Air major airports are really important part of, of spaceport operations. So in essentially finding the best place for a spaceport is a number of critical logistics issues have to be considered, as well as that you actually find somewhere safe to launch from and some which actually gives you good, good access to the correct polar or the correct um, orbital routes. Chris, thank you so much for that. I think what we'll do, we'll keep the audience wanting some more and they can go to your article, which will be in the show notes. Uh, this will also be inserted within uh, the website itself. But from an overview of Australia's spaceports and our sovereign launch uh, requirements and the spaceport requirements, uh, that's, that really does provide some great insight. So thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you, Chris. And have everyone have a really great day today. Great. Thank you very much. Dr. Thank Chris Flaherty with MySpace Warfare Analysis Lab. Have a great day. Thank you very much for joining us.